Hey guys, this is our oral presentation. So. From a young age, Jamarcus lost her major attachment figure after her parents got divorced and her dad developed bad drinking habits. She didn't receive the emotional support that's required for healthy development throughout early childhood. During childhood, she was bullied at school almost every day to the point where she was unable to have many friendships. She had some unrealistic and lasting worries that something bad will happen to her life if she was left alone. She started to experience physical symptoms such as headaches and stomach aches, especially on school days. By adolescence, Jamarcus became extremely distressed about having to go to school in which she was unable to communicate with her friends and began to withdraw from social activities. At age 15, she experienced her first panic attack during a lunch break at school. After that, she would isolate in the toilets in fear that she would have another unexpected panic attack. After a few unexpected panic attacks during school hours, Jamarcus dropped out of school and started a short course. She often wakes up due to unexpected panic attacks. Jamarcus is now 22 years old and relies on public transportation to travel for her training. However, she usually stays home rather than attend her lectures. Today, she has decided to catch the bus. As she leaves home, she starts to feel nervous, remembering the last time she tried to catch the bus four weeks ago and experienced an unexpected panic attack. For those four weeks, she felt like she was going crazy and avoided public transportation altogether. She wonders which routes the bus will take, how many people will be on there, how long in between the stops and what the traffic is like today. As she approaches the bus stop, she starts to sweat, experiences shortness of breath and feels her heart rate has accelerated. Jamarcus reaches for her wallet to grab her mikey and notices her hands trembling. An increase in heart rate has now developed into severe chest pains. When she sees the bus approaching, she starts to feel as though she is having a heart attack. She's now convinced that the bus will crash on the way and she will die if she catches the bus. Jamarcus decides to go home instead. Panic disorders are a type of anxiety disorder where their individual experiences severe and unexpected panic attacks. This leads the sufferer to believe they are dying and not in control of their situation. Panic disorders seem to be related most strongly to biological and psychological factors and in which the interaction usually occurs in early adult life aging between 20 and 24. Approximately 2.7% of the population meet the criteria for panic disorder during any given one year period. Jamarcus would be diagnosed with having a panic disorder as she did meet the DSM-5 criteria in the areas of experiencing recurrent panic attacks on numerous occasions, which were also unexpected and out of the blue. In this specific case study, Jamarcus did experience four or more of the symptoms of increased sweating, increased heart rate, chest pains and trembling. She also felt like she was dying and going crazy, making her feel like she was losing control. She also experienced headaches and stomach aches. Jamarcus did have a maladaptive change in behavior as she did avoid the bus stop by walking home as she felt like she was going to die. All of these symptoms occurred without any attribution to the influence of any other substance as Jamarcus wasn't taking any other medication or drugs linking to the fact that Jamarcus's situation could not be better described with another disorder. Jamarcus has also had a disturbed sleep due to unexpected panic attacks, which is known as nocturnal panic attacks. Similar diagnosis that may be referred to is social anxiety disorder. Social anxiety disorder refers to experiencing fear or anxiety in one or more social or performance situations. The main features in the diagnostic criteria according to the DSM-5 criteria involve intense fear of social situations in which an individual may be scrutinized by others, fear of showing anxiety symptoms that may be negatively evaluated, social situations always provoking fear or anxiety, and avoidance of these situations. To be diagnosed with social anxiety disorder, the duration of disturbance with an individual's normal routine and functioning needs to be at least six months. Jamarcus does not fear that her symptoms will be negatively evaluated by others, and she does not fear every social situation. Jamarcus's fear is focused on having unexpected panic attacks, whereas an individual with social anxiety disorder will expect their panic attacks to occur. Thus, the symptoms experienced by Jamarcus would be better explained by panic disorder rather than social anxiety disorder. Another diagnosis that is similar to panic disorder is agoraphobia. Agoraphobia refers to the fear and avoidance of situations in which a person feels unsafe or unable to escape in the event of developing panic symptoms. The main diagnostic criteria for agoraphobia includes having marked fear or anxiety in situations like being out of the home alone and public transportation. The individual will avoid these situations and this would have to occur for six months or more. It is possible that Jamarcus may also have agoraphobia, but more research into her avoidance of specific social situations needs to be covered. 
individual differences. So age, Jamarcus experienced her first panic attack at age 15, while the median age of onset of panic disorder is usually 20 to 24, unexpected panic attacks start to occur after puberty. Uh, gender, according to the DSM-5, panic disorder tends to affect women more than men with a rate of around two to one. Risk factors, a risk factor for Jamarcus was that she experienced hardships throughout her childhood as she was bullied and received a lack of social support. She also experienced fearful spells, which are limited symptom attacks, such as experiencing headaches and stomach aches, which are a risk factor. Uh, culture, panic disorder occurs in all cultures. However, the expression of anxiety differs. For example, there are culturally defined symptoms in Hispanic Americans, such as shouting uncontrollably. While this is not relevant to Jamarcus in this case, it is important to note cultural differences when diagnosing individuals with panic disorder. So pharmacological treatments, the most commonly used class of medication to treat panic disorder is benzodiazepines. They are anti-anxiety agents that act on the limbic system, thalamus and spinal cord to promote muscle relaxation and ultimately decrease anxiety. However, it may produce adverse effects on cognitive and motor functions as well as having a high dependence rate. The following medications used to treat panic disorder are within the class of antidepressants. Selective serotonin reuptake Inhibitors or SSRIs are widely used in the treatment of panic disorder, often promoted more than benzodiazepines. SSRIs work to delay the action of serotonin, assisting to regulate mood. Serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, incorporate the regulation of noradrenaline as well as serotonin. They are often referred to as an alternative treatment when SSRI, SSRIs have no effect. A Defect in the regulation of serotonin and noradrenaline may impact a range of cognitive functions, such as balanced mood, which may contribute to the development of anxiety disorders, such as panic disorder. Uh, an alternative treatment for panic disorder would be cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. As the name suggests, cognitive behavioral therapy focuses on the cognition or the psychology involved in the anxiety and the subsequent behavioral coping strategies. It's important to note that CBT does not refer to one specific method of anxiety reduction, but rather focuses on a range of techniques, seeing how effective each one is and combining techniques to achieve maximum potential with each therapy session. Some examples of CBT techniques for panic disorder are applied relaxation. This involves noticing the signs of rising anxiety, such as the tension in the body and increased heart rate, uh, such breathing, then applying relaxation techniques to overcome them such as muscle relaxation, focusing on each part of the body, or a simple breathe in for five, breathe out for 10. This could replace current unhelpful behavioral coping strategies that feed the panic symptoms. It would also involve identifying positive feedback loops. An example of this in panic disorders are clients misinterpreting anxious sensations as an indication of an incoming physical or mental catastrophe, such as a mental breakdown or a heart attack. Alongside this would be consistent sessions breaking down the origins of the fear and underlying anxiety issues. CBT would combine these methods and refer to the client to see which is the most effective in lowering panic symptoms. It typically takes 12 therapy sessions over weekly or bi-weekly periods, so results can take longer than with medicating. While it is possible, while it is possible for Jamarcus to use a combination of CBT and pharmacological treatments such as SSRIs, the combined therapy is more costly and a longer treatment plan follows. CBT would be a suitable intervention for Jamarcus as she would not have to rely on pharmaceuticals and the possibility of dependence, especially with benzodiazepines, as they require high dosages in order to be effective. And in addition, CBT has a long-term efficacy and low risk of relapse. Based on Jamarcus's fear in crowded environments, such as catching public transport, she exhibits the symptoms paired with ag agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is common amongst panic disorder patients and an effective technique to reduce the Marcus's fear using public transport is exposure therapy, also known as flooding. Exposure therapy is a component of CBT where the patient gradually work their way to confront their fear situation until it is no longer perceived as frightening.